it's recorded. Karam, do you expect more than the number of participants currently? Well, my Sheikh, if you if you can give only two minutes more, inshallah, and then we can start if you don't mind. Yes, inshallah, inshallah. I can see now, like most of the people, but just in case if I miss somebody, put in two minutes, and uh, and it's gonna be recorded anyway, inshallah. Inshallah. Brother Zakir, is the audio working for you? If it's not, just uh, leave the Zoom and come back right away. كيفك شيخي كيف حال الاسره ان شاء الله بخير؟ الحمد لله الحمد لله انا جدا مشتاق لكم والله الله يبارك فيك ان شاء الله نرتب لقاء ان شاء الله ونشوفك في الشر ضروري ضروري ان شاء الله متى السفر الى الحج؟ ان شاء الله في 2 يعني 2 جون وفي 3 جون ان شاء الله ان شاء الله ان شاء الله قلبي سيطير معكم بارك الله فيكم الله يحفظكم شيخي العزيز الله يبارك فيك Okay, انتظر انتظر اشاره منك والله يا يو كان جو هيد ان شاء الله اوكي ان شاء الله الحمد لله واشهد ان لا اله الا الله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي my brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته uh, this is uh, your brother, uh, Munir Al-Qasim. Uh, I am uh, going to try to simplify uh, the different segments of this ibadah, which for uh, most of you, uh, it could be the first time that you are embarking on. And it is very important that you do not uh, you know, start by confusing yourself with all the different ramifications and different steps, and then it's easy to be confused. So, inshallah, ala Allah al we depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to simplify, you know, this and the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla wa anta taj. Oh Allah, nothing is easy unless you make it easy and you make all things easy, inshallah. Now, uh, having said that, I would like to say that, uh, you know, uh, Hajj and Umrah uh, are associated together and uh, we hear that there are three different ways that we can do Hajj and uh, you know one of them is uh, to perform Umrah come out of Umrah wait a little bit and then start Hajj on the 8th of Dhul Hijjah and that is called Hajj at tamattu and the other form is to do Umrah stay in Ihram and then on the 8th of the Hijjah, continue to do Hajj. And that is called Hajj Al-Qiran. Al-Qiran means yeah. you uh, join Umrah with Hajj with one Ihram. Now, Tamattu' means to enjoy that period, that space between Umrah and Hajj 
by not having to be in a state of ihram. That's what tamattu is. And literally, tamattu means enjoyment, enjoyment of that period. Uh, because, you know, let's uh, face it, ihram with all its restrictions is not an easy undertaking. And we have to really show preparedness to go through all the requirements of ihram. So the first one is, uh, Umrah, coming out of it, waiting until the 8th of the Hijjah, and then going to Mina to start Hajj, and that's Tamattu. Now, the second one is to join Umrah with Hajj, with the same Ihram, and that's called Qiran. And the third one is called Ifrad. Ifrad means that you come because you did not have time to do Umrah, so you come directly uh, just before the 8th of the Hijjah, and you start Hajj only with one Ihram, you do not do Umrah, and that is Ifrad. Ifrad means just to isolate Hajj from Umrah. Now, so that at the beginning we do not get in a state of confusion Everybody, everybody, and I mean everyone on this group, and the majority of Muslims who do Hajj nowadays do the first one, which is Tamattu. So forget about now being uh, confused by reading about uh, the second and the third kinds of Hajj. Let's focus on the Hajj called At-Tamattu. We will do Umrah, we will come out of Ihram, then before the 8th or on the 8th of the Hijjah, we will put Ihram again from Mecca, from Mecca, and then we will start our Hajj, and then we will finish our Hajj, and I will go over that, inshallah. Now, okay. for uh, I would really appreciate if you mute your microphones because you know it gets a little bit distracting if i hear you know uh, voices because we have a large number of participants jazakumullah khair so what we are going to do uh, we are not going to put everything we heard about umrah and everything we heard about hajj in one basket because then we don't know where to start and what is really uh, uh, an obligation and what is a pillar and what is a sunnah and what is recommended and what is, you know, uh, not recommended. We have to really understand the different levels of what we have to do. So let us start by, you know, focusing on Umrah. Umrah, Umrah has five pillars. A pillar is defined as that act of the worship, which if we miss, our act of worship will not be accepted. And then after we talk about the pillars, we will talk about the obligations or wajibat. You know, the obligations, you know, these are the things we have to do. But if we miss for an excuse, then we can fix that and still our act of worship, you know, keeps going. There's no problem. The sunnah is defined as that thing which we may do and get more reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if we do not do it, then we are not going to really uh, uh, get so upset. And, uh, you know, it is recommended to be a sunnah. And then there are recommendations not Sunnah, but Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did not do it all the time. He did it sometimes, and then he said, if you do it, it'll be good. So it's not defined as Sunnah. Sunnah is something that he did all the time. So that, if we do it, extra rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then there are certain things that are called restrictions. We cannot do while we are engaged in that act of worship. So uh, before I go any further, let me just mention that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did Hajj once in his lifetime, and that is referred to as the farewell Hajj. And he did four Umrah in his lifetime. 
So based on that, let us now proceed. We, in your group, may go directly from Toronto to Medina, or you may go directly to Mecca, depending on your port of entry into the Haram of the Kaaba, the Haram of Mecca, you have to start your Ihram at that point of entry. So for the people who are going directly to Medina, you will be doing your Ihram for the Umrah at a place called Abiyar Ali or Masjid al-Shajara, the Masjid of the Tree. There is a Masjid there which is about 10 kilometers from Medina. You will do your Niyya of Ihram there and then you proceed towards Mecca. For people, let's say, who are landing in Jeddah and then going directly to Mecca, you know, whether they are really stopping in Egypt before or they are, wherever they are, they will do their ihram from the airport before, you know, they will pass over that point where the, you know, uh, airplane staff will announce we are passing over the miqat. Miqat is that place you cannot really pass without being in a state of ihram. So let us talk now. So now we are starting with Umrah. Don't think Hajj yet. You are either in Medina or you are coming to Jeddah and from Jeddah proceeding to Mecca to do Umrah right away. So what are the pillars of Umrah that you cannot really miss? You have to do. And by the way, let me give you some comfort by saying it is impossible to miss any of those. How many Pillars are there for Umrah. There are five pillars. What are they? Number one, the niya of Ihram. And I will talk about these in details. The niya, the intention of Ihram. Number two, tawaf around the Kaaba. Number three, sa'i between Safa and Marwa. Number four, shaving or shortening of the hair. And it is recommended that for everybody, for Umrah, we shorten the hair because for the men, they need to shave it maybe after a few days. So you need to have enough hair to really shave it afterwards. Okay, I'm seeing that Brother Zakir Hussein doesn't have to worry about that. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> okay, so, so, uh, uh, so we shorten the hair for Umrah. And number five, we have to do all the above, all the four, in order. You cannot say, well, you know, I entered the Masjid al-Haram and I saw that the Kaaba is too crowded, so I'm going to do the Sa'i, then I will come back to do the Tawaf. No, we cannot do that. It has to be in order. So I repeat, the five pillars of Umrah are the Niyya of Ihram, number two, Tawaf, Number three, Sa'i. Number four, shortening of the hair. And number five, doing all the above four in order. So now, let us talk about the obligations of Umrah, the wajibat of Umrah. Well, if there are five pillars of Umrah, there's only one, only one obligation of Umrah, one wajib, and that is to do our niyyah of ihram at or before the miqat, which I mentioned, if you are coming from Medina, it will be at Abiyar Ali, at Masjid al-Shajara. This is the wajib. If you are coming from Jeddah to Mecca, you know, by the time you arrive in Jeddah, you should have already been in a state of ihram. So you will be coming over a place called Rabir. Forget about the names, but it's a place called Rabir. And when the uh, uh, plane passes over it, they will announce, okay, that we are passing over the Miqat. But it'll be very difficult to go to the facilities in the plane and the change from your clothes to put on the Ihram for the men, for the men. So you have to be prepared at the airport before you, you will take the plane and move 
ports Jeddah. So this is how we are going to do it. So inshallah, let me start by talking about the uh, uh, pillars of Umrah, and then we will insert the sunnah that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did between the pillars of Umrah. So I will say, okay, after we do tawaf, there is a sunnah of doing this and this. And then once we start the sa'i, which is a pillar, we do this. And, you know, these are the sunan. So it will be like a jigsaw puzzle, whereby first we know the big pieces, and then we will put the small pieces in between. And that will be easier for us to uh, uh, comprehend. So inshallah, for the ihram, let me say that for women, there are no clothing requirements for ihram. The woman will be covered head to toe, okay, only exposing the face and the hands, like she ought to be dressed all the time. So if a woman keeps that shari'i dress, then she is ready. So what we have to do for men, men have, you know, clothing requirements. What are they? They have to remove all their clothes, everything, and then have two sheets, one called the izar, the lower sheet to cover the bottom part of the body, and one is for the top, and that is called the rida. And, you know, uh, you really need to have some demonstration. You can, you know, I will try at the end to answer it, you know, in specificity. But this is for the men. They remove everything and they put these two pieces. And, you know, they have to put the kind of uh, uh, footwear that is slippers where they must, must, must expose their heels. They must. They cannot cover them. But it is sunnah to expose the toes as well. So if you have a Crocs, for example, that does not expose the toes, okay, that is fine. But it's better to have something where the toes and the heels are exposed. And, you know, it is sunnah, not a wajib, not a pillar for the ihram. It is sunnah to have a ghusl, full ablution, before you put on those sheets. And for women, before they put on their regular clothes, you know, it is sunnah, I repeat, it's sunnah. Not wajib, not an obligation to have a full ablution. Now it is, it is recommended, but not sunnah. Here I'm saying it is recommended to offer two raka'at of ihram after you make your ghusl and you put on your sheets for men and your regular clothes it is recommended okay let's find the difference between sunnah and recommended mustahab to have two raka'at now why is it recommended not a sunnah because prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the four Umrah that he performed, he did his ihram after Salat al-Zuhr, after praying Salat al-Zuhr regularly. But since you do not know whether you will be able to start your ihram process at Zuhr time or not, then it is recommended to have two raka'at, you know, to emulate the example of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, it is recommended again to recite in the first rak'ah after the fatiha قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ after the fatiha of the second rak'ah it is recommended to recite قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ but if you recite any other surah it's okay no problem so now now we have our ihram and we made our niyyah and we make our niyyah verbally the only niyyah in Islam that you have to say it and it has to be heard by other people 
if you are a man and it has to be heard by women only if you are a woman is the niyyah of Umrah and the niyyah of Hajj. And you have to say, please, if you want to take notes, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِعُمْرَةِ مُتَمَتِّعًا بِهَا إِلَى الْحَجِّ لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِعُمْرَةِ مُتَمَتِّعًا بِهَا إِلَى الْحَجِّ Meaning that it is tamattu, mutamattian. You know that there will be a period where I will you know, come out of my ihram and then wait until the 8th and then go into hajj. Then we add something. Please remember. And we say, فَإِنْ حَبَسَنِي حَابِسٌ فَمَحِلِّي حَيْثُ حَبَسْتَنِي فَإِنْ حَبَسَنِي حَابِسٌ فَمَحِلِّي حَيْثُ حَبَسْتَنِي Meaning, if, God forbid, I would not be able to finish all the rituals of Umrah and Hajj, and I have to come out, you know, I become chronically ill, something happens, I'm unable to finish, then you come out of Ihram without penalty, without a kafara. You do not have to slaughter an animal. But if you forget to say it, your niya is valid, but God forbid if anything happens, you have to give a kafara. So now we made our niyyah, we arrived in Mecca, and after we make our niyyah, by the way, there are restrictions. Now, what are the restrictions? We cannot use any scented soap, we cannot use perfumes, we cannot uh, uh, plug any weed from the service station we are passing on, we cannot, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, be intimate with our spouses. You know, it's all now in restriction. We arrived, you know, at Mecca, at Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Now, all the other logistical things, they will be told, told to you by your uh, murshid, by your guide. Now, I take you all the way to the entrance of Al-Masjid Al-Haram, and there are some dua. Now, the dua, again, these are recommended. It is not a sunnah, but it is recommended to say, A'udhu billahi al-azim wa bi sultanihi al-qadim min ash-shaytani al-rajim Allahumma ftah li abwaab rahmatik Meaning, I seek refuge in Allah the Great, and I seek refuge in the eternal dominion of Allah. And I ask you, O Allah, to open the gates of your mercy for me. And then you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I start with the name of Allah, the All-Merciful, the Compassionate. And it is recommended, not a sunnah, but recommended, that as you move towards the Kaaba, you will be able, by the way, if you look straight, you will see parts of the Kaaba in front of you. It is recommended not to look at it. Keep your eyes down and keep going until you get to a spot where everyone can see the Kaaba without any obstruction. And then you lift your eyes and you let go of your emotions. Now, some people cannot tear physically, but it is the heart that really tears. And now, you know, you look at the Kaaba and Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that each one of you will have a dua that you can make without being rejected. So have that dua ready for the first time you lay your eyes on the Kaaba. Make that dua. And then after that, you know, you may say a collective dua with your guide or you may not say it, but it is recommended to say, Allahumma zid hadha al-bayta sharafan wa ta'zeeman wa mahabatan wa qadra. O Allah, elevate the status of this bayt, of this Kaaba, and elevate the Kaaba with sanctity and with honor, O Allah. And then 
you go slightly to the right because you will be entering from uh, uh, a gate uh, uh, whereby uh, you will end up away from the black stone. You need to start your tawaf from the black stone. So you move a little bit to the right and you did not start your tawaf until you get to the black stone. When you get to the black stone, it is uh, the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to start by kissing the black stone. But forget it. Forget it. You will not be able to get close to even kiss the black stone. Okay, well, what shall we do then? Now, if you cannot kiss the black stone and you will never be able to do that, okay, you can touch the black stone. Forget it. You will not be able to get close to touch the black stone. So what shall we do? From wherever we get, we will either raise both hands or we raise the right hand and we turn our body in its entirety if it is safe to do so. It is recommended, not the sunnah, recommended that we turn our body towards the black stone and we say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Now, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar is a recommendation. If, let's say, the second, the third, the fourth round, you forgot to say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and you kept going, don't say, I have to go back and say, no, 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 no. This is not a wajib. It is not a pillar. It is not a sunnah. It is recommended to say it. So let us really focus on these things and not feel guilty if you miss a recommended act, if we miss this, if we miss that. So now we know what we are going to do. So we turn towards the Kaaba if we can. Now it is recommended, but not a sunnah, not a wajib, to keep looking at the Kaaba as you are making your dua. But if it is not safe and you feel that somebody is going to push you from the back and you will fall, then don't look at the Kaaba. Because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that looking at the Kaaba is an act of worship. So look at the Kaaba if you can. Make your dua. And by the way, when you make dua around the Kaaba, you do not do this. Don't raise your hands. You just basically walk and make your dua. Now, what dua, what language? Any language. You are not in salat. So you can make the dua in any language. That will make your heart resonate with the you know position you are in so make dua you ran out of dua which i don't think anyone could you're next to the kaaba this is the place so recite qul huwa allahu ahad recite qul a'udhu bi falaq recite quran go back to tasbih subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha but don't stop what if I stopped accidentally or I stopped because I got tired? No problem. That's not a restriction. It's okay. So keep going around the Kaaba seven times. And it is, it is a must that you be in a state of wudu. You have to be in wudu while you are doing tawaf. Now, one thing for men, obviously not for women, obviously not for women for the reason i'm going to mention you know for men as you are entering you know the premises of al masjid al haram to start your tawaf your right shoulder should be exposed this is sunnah it is not recommended it's sunnah prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had his right shoulder exposed that's called ittiba so you expose it and you do all seven rounds with your right shoulder exposed. Another sunnah, which unfortunately will not be able to be done, is to do the first three rounds around the Kaaba in uh, a state of speeding called Ramal. But you will not be able to do that because of the crowds that will be around the Kaaba, it's impossible to do that. Impossible to do that. 
So just go with the group that you are in. So you do that, and then you finish your tawaf. Already, already two of the pillars of Umrah are finished. Now we have to insert a sunnah. You know, before we do the third pillar, which is sa'i, what is that sunnah that we have to insert? It is to offer two raka'at. It says in the books behind Maqam Ibrahim, forget it. Impossible. Because behind Maqam Ibrahim, people are doing tawaf. You will find people who really insist and they are exposing themselves and others to grave danger. Anywhere your guide takes you where there's an empty spot, you go there and offer two rak'at facing the Kaaba. And it is recommended, not sunnah, recommended the same as when you did ihram, you recite after the Fatiha of the first rak'ah, you recite, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ And in the second rak'ah after the Fatiha, you recite, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ And then, you know, after you do this sunnah, you stand up. Before you go to do the third pillar, there's another sunnah. What is it? You drink zamzam. Because, you know, after you really uh, uh, got rid of the negative charges in your body by doing tawaf, I cannot get into details now, but you get rid of those negative charges. Now you have to replenish your body with the energy-filled water of zamzam. So you drink zamzam, and if you can, drink it beyond your ability. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu recommended that when you drink zamzam, drink more than your capacity. Because you will find that zamzam will just the same as a sponge will absorb water. Zamzam will go much faster than any other body, than any other water into your uh, tissues you know and and you will feel so great so this is the second sunnah now you are on your way you are going up a ramp by the way you will find you are going up a ramp to start from a safa now the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam another sunnah is to start from safa not from marwa and when people ask rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam why safa not marwa he said we are going to start from where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started in the Quran when he said, Inna safa wal marwata min sha'airillah. He did not say, Inna al marwata wal safa. He said, Inna safa wal marwa. So we're going to start with safa. So you go to a safa. Now, it is sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you face the Kaaba before you start your sa'i. And it is recommended that you recite in the Safa wal Marwata min Sha'air Allah, Faman Hajjal Beta or Atamara Fala Junah Ali and Yatawa Fabihima, Woman Tatawa Hiram Fa in Allah Shakirun Alim. Well, I, uh, I, 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 I don't know how to say it. I can, well, very good. You cannot, though, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But if you are with a group and there is a guide, the guide will say it. And you may repeat after the guide. But if you don't have a guide with you, okay, I leave it to Brother Karam to explain the logistics, then don't worry about it. It is not a wajib. It is not a wajib. Now, it is recommended after recitation of this ayah to say, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahul mulk. Because Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said that the best utterance that I and all the prophets before me did is La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahul mulk wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir which means there's no deity worthy of worship but Allah alone without any partner. To him belongs the dominion. And to him belongs the praising, okay? And he is omnipotent over all things. So we say that to establish the oneness, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we are at as-safa. Then we start the third pillar. 
which is going from Safa to Al Marwa. It is 800 meters between Safa and Marwa. What shall we do? It is extremely crowded. So you have to feel that you are, you know, a, a, a drop in the ocean of humanity. You will humble yourself when you will look at the top of a Safa, you know, and you will look, you will see Allahu Akbar, all those people doing what I'm doing. Who am I? No one. But you are worthy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only in as much as you have taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing you as a guest so oh, that yeah. you develop taqwa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So insha'Allah, you yeah, will yeah. do that. You will go the 800 meters. Okay. Thank you. Brother, oh, Imad, you? brother Imad, Imad, can you please mute your microphone? That's nice. Brother oh, Imad, can you please mute your microphone? Sorry. So, so you go and what shall you say? You just say what you said around the Kaaba. Same thing. Make dua. Make dhikr. Read Quran. But do not, please, do not look next to you if there is a friend, a brother, and start talking about your business. And start talking about, you know, other things. No, 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 no. You are still in an act of worship. However, there's one you know, loosening of a restriction. And that is, if you lose your wudu while making sa'i, don't worry about it. In tawaf, if you lose your wudu, you have to excuse yourself. Go and make your wudu and then determine, did I lose my wudu in the fourth round, in the third round, in the fifth round? I lost it towards the end of the fourth round. Am I going to start my tawaf from that spot or from the black stone? The answer is from the black stone of the fourth round of the fourth round. Always from the black stone. Always. So now I missed saying one thing when I was talking about tawaf. Let me go back, but then again quickly to say that when you reach the corner before the black stone it's called ar-rukn al-yamani ar-rukn al-yamani okay it's immediately before the black stone now some people will raise their hand towards ar-rukn al-yamani that is wrong if you are unable to touch it you do not raise your hand what shall you do nothing but between a rukn al yamani and the black stone, there is a recommended recitation. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. O Allah, grant us a favor in this dunya and a similar favor in the hereafter and shield us from the hellfire. So you keep saying it. Until you get to the black stone, you raise your hand or both hands. You say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. And now the second one and the third and the fourth. Now back quickly to a sai So we did, you know, the first round of sai We reached now Al-Marwa. We go around Marwa. It is now recommended, but not Sunnah. Recommended to face the Kaaba again and say what we said at as safa in the Safa wal Marwa min Sha'ar Allah, but it will be so crowded that you may not be able to group yourselves and stand in a place and do that because you will be pushed. So keep going. If you can with your body face the Kaaba, and by the way, there are lines of marble, you know, that show you, you know, where the Kaaba is, the direction of the Kaaba. So just basically look at those lines and face the Kaaba. And say it in your heart. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahul mulk wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. And then keep going. What to say? The same as we said when we came from As-Safa to Al-Marwa. Tasbih, dhikr, dua, Quran. You know, now get to, you know, a place you will find closer to As-Safa than it is to Al-Marwa. Much closer to As-Safa than it is to Al-Marwa. And that is, you know, two green lines. They are in the ceiling called Al-Milayn Al-Akhdarayn. 
whereby, you know, we emulate the example of Hajar. You know, Hajar, you know, she raced, uh, not raced in the way she ran. She didn't run. She just basically moved quickly. You will find people sprinting. That is wrong. You do not sprint. You just move quick. So you move quickly and then to the second one. And I recommend if you are with your wife, if you are with your sister, if you are with the group of women, you wait for them a little bit. You slow down until they catch up with you because women do not do that. And then you reunite. Otherwise, you will be lost from each other. There are some logistical things you have to do to maintain, you know, the space with each other. Then you go to a safa You face the Kaaba if you can. You do the same thing. And then you go to Al Marwa, Safa, Marwa. So you started at Safa, you will end at Al Marwa because it's seven of them. Now you finish the third pillar of Umrah. And now you are going to leave the gate, you know, at Al Marwa and head you know, to where you will be told by your group leader where the point of meeting will be so that you will go to have shortening of your hair. And again, I recommend many people will be so enthusiastic. They say, no, I want to shave it for men. Now, obviously for women, you know, it's a different story all the time. It is shortening. And I will talk about that for women. But for men, don't shave it yet because you will need to shave after Hajj. So you shorten your hair, you know, and if, you know, the barber asks you at what, uh, you know, say number three. Number three is the most adequate, you know, to shorten your hair, you know, in preparation for Hajj. So you do that, you do that. And, you know, whether you will go to a certain barber, whether, you know, it, I leave it to your guide to tell you what you're going to do. Now, when you shorten your hair, you finished your Umrah. You would say, but these are four. What happened to the fifth one? Well, the fifth one, as we said, is to do the above four in order, and we did them in order. So we are done. So we are done. So now, now we go. But before we go, I want to say to the sisters, now you will hear that some sisters say, that it suffices to take part of the hair and just, you know, basically cut the size of, uh, you know, uh, part of the finger. Okay. Uh, I say this is what Imam Shafi'i allowed. But Imam Abu Hanifa said, as well as all the other Imams, that it will be an even shortening across the hair, the bottom of the hair, even shortening. And where shall you do that? Well, you do that at the hotel. You don't have to do it right at the Masjid Al-Haram. You stay in a state of Ihram until you get to the hotel, and then you go to a place where men are not watching. You will see many girls and women, you know, offering scissors and say, you know, I'll cut for you and this. Don't do it there because you never know. These scissors are not hygienic. So you go to your hotel and my recommendation, you know, find somebody who did Umrah already, you know, to, to do it for one of you. And then, you know, you will do it to another woman in the group and both of you will do it to two others. And now four of you will do it to four others. And now the eight of you will do it to eight others. And then 16 will go. And that's the way you will finish, inshallah, for everybody. Now, can my husband do it for me? If you do not find another woman, then yes, your husband can do it for you. But some of the scholars say, because you are still in a state of ihram, your husband cannot touch you. But others say that if you don't find another woman and your husband has to do it, then it is fine, no problem. Okay, now I will answer your questions afterwards in regard to that. So now you finished your umrah, you take a shower, and you come into a regular clothes for men, and regular clothes for women, it's already, you know, your clothes, basically. But if you want to change, you can change. You can use perfumed soap. You can do anything you want to do. Now you are done the first part of Hajj at tamattu Now, now, passed forward to the 8th of Dhul-Hijjah. 
Now, it is the 8th of the Hijjah. You will be getting instructions from your group guide, from, you know, Brother Karam, from, uh, you know, all the people of al Medina. Uh, Hajj and Umrah that we are going to leave by buses or by trains or or whatever. I'm not going to get into that. Okay, but you will repeat the same ihram, the same restrictions, the same everything that you did for Umrah. Do you have to repeat your niyyah? No, you don't, because you already said that. You know, لبيك اللهم بعمرة متمتعا بها إلى الحج. Now, some scholars say now it will be recommended, but not a must to say لبيك اللهم بحج. But your niya was already embedded when you did the niya for the حج التمتع when you did your umrah. So you now get into ihram the same thing as I talked about for umrah. And the buses will take you to your camp in Mina. The camp you will be spending the days called Ayyam al Tashriq. After you finish your Hajj, you will come and stay there for two or three days. So you will be taken to the camp there. And what you will be doing on the 8th, you know, depending on the time you arrive, you will be offering Salat al Zuhr. Two raka'at. You do not combine it with asr. You just shorten it. When asr time, you two raka'at. Then ish two raka'at. And then, depending on what you are told and the time you are leaving, mina to go to Arafat. Because Arafat, ninth of the Hijjah. Depending, some people will be leaving, uh, you know, uh, immediately after. You will be told when. And again, whether you will be leaving by train or by bus, whatever you are told, you will do. And then you would leave Mina, and then you go to Arafat, your camp in Arafat. Depending on the time you arrive, some people may arrive before Fajr. Some people may arrive after Fajr. Okay, so you pray Fajr. Okay, uh, at the time you need to pray Fajr, whether it is in Mina or in Arafat, depending on the time, so that you do not really lose, you know, the time of Fajr. Then you arrive at your camp. Okay, we are in Arafat. Many people get so excited that they are in Arafat now and they start to pray, and they start to make the... No, 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 no. This is not the time yet. When you arrive in Arafat, please take my advice, which is the advice of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Get some rest. Because after Dhuhr, you may not sleep for about 36 to 40 hours after that. So you need to get some rest now, sleep, sleep. And then shortly before Dhuhr, you will be awakened. And then, you know, you will be, uh, 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 you know, you will make wudu and you will get ready. And then, and then you will sit and you would uh, uh, listen to the khutbah of Arafat which will be given by an imam in your camp. And you listen to it. And then after that, you will be praying Salat al-Zuhr, two raka'at with an iqama, and then another iqama to pray Asr, two raka'at. So you combine them now. In Mina, you did not combine. But in Arafat, you combine them. And then immediately after you pray the two raka'at of Asr, Keep going. Dua. What's next? Dua. What's next? Dua. So the most you really need to do in Arafat is Dua. You ran out of what you want to say, then number two, Dhikr. Tasbih. You ran out of that, go back to Dua. You ran out of that, 
go back to tasbih. You want to do something else? Do salat. You want to do something else? Recite Quran. But don't sit. I've seen over the years many people who really started as they arrived in Arafat to do these things. I'm talking about, you know, when it is the time to do it, they are so exhausted that they take a nap. They, this is not the, the time to really, you know, you should give each time what it's worthy for. So you do that until about an hour before sunset. It is recommended that the group of the camp, again, I leave it to your guide. I'm not going to interfere, but you try to go outside your tent and make a dua standing up. And if you don't know what to say, there may be a guide who will say the dua and you say, Ameen. And the dua doesn't have to be in Arabic. It can be in English. It can be in Urdu. It can be in Turkish. It can be in Bosnian, whatever language you speak. And then you, because the dua before sunset on the day of Arafah is it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited you for that hour. So please don't miss that hour. And then, you know, after you make your dua, after you make your dua, you will be told, you know, that you will be leaving by bus or by train or whatever, you know, mode of transportation you are assigned to. And then you will be leaving Arafat towards Muzdalifa. Now, Muzdalifa is a place where you will be offering Maghrib and then followed by two rak'at of Isha with two iqama in congregation. Where? On the ground. Wherever you find an open space, you pray. Uh, well, it's so dusty. There, that's the, that's the uh, 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 whole idea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see us shu'than ghubra, meaning he would love to see now our hair becoming so dusty. We are sweating. We are covered with, with you know, this is it. Because Allah is watching the heart, not the body. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for men did not want them to come in their best of clothes and 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 that. no 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 for women it is the modesty that really counts it's how you really cover yourself and humble yourself before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore you know don't worry you pray and then you go to sleep after you eat something and by the way i can tell you that every time we used to sleep in muzdalifa it's the deepest sleep that we will have. Some people just continue to sit. I don't advise that. Because as I said, if you will stay awake, it will be 36 to 40 hours of straight awake. By the time you really need to do the other tawaf of hajj, you are unable to do it. So please sleep. So you sleep. Now, some people who have an excuse may leave after the middle of the night to go to Mina. Notice I said after the middle of the night. I did not say after midnight. There's a difference. Some people may think after midnight, it's after 12 midnight. No, 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 no. The night varies in its length throughout the year so somebody has to do the calculation between maghrib and fajr maghrib of the ninth and fajr of the tenth how many hours divide it into two that's the middle of the night so some people who have an excuse may leave muzdalifa after the middle of the night and go towards mina others as rasulullah did after Fajr, they prayed Fajr in Muzdalifa, and then they left after that towards Mina. But Rasulullah sent 
you know, his uncle Al-Abbas with the women and the elderly who could not really uh, tolerate the discomfort of Muzdalifa. And when I say discomfort, nowadays they have certain facilities that, you know, one wonders whether it is Muzdalifa still or it is now uh, nicely furnished. Um, you know, some different groups have different arrangements. But the more you can tolerate of the hardships, the more you will feel spiritually uplifted. So whether you, lifted after, you, you left after the middle of the night or whether you left after Fajr, it's the same thing. When you arrive, you know, in Mina, when you arrive in Mina, some people say, no, 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 wait a minute. You know, the things you are going to mention, the four things that are to be done on the day of Eid or on the 10th of the Hijjah have to be done after Fajr. No, the consensus of scholars is once you are arrived, if you are among the elderly or the women, or once you arrive in Mina, you can do the four things. And here, you know, please, I will ask you, you know, some people because of Hajj and Umrah having the most differences in fatwa among scholars, some people say, no, 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 you, you're wrong. You are doing it. Please don't do that to each other. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to do it according to a certain method, and by the way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal Islam to be a madhab. What was the madhab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Was he a Hanafi or a Shafi'i or a Maliki or a Hanbali? It is the Hanafi who tried to take from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what Imam Abu Hanifa said, this is how it should be. Imam Shafi'i looked at it differently. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to be fixed, he would have fixed it in Quran. Or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have said it in his hadith. So let us, let us not engage. And by the way, even though I'm saying it, you will find some people say, no, oh, sorry, your hajj is not valid. You lost it. Don't buy into this, brothers and sisters. That's why already I told you there are arkan pillars and there are wajib and there are sunnah and there are recommendations and things. So don't buy into these mentalities that will make you feel guilty. Because if you feel guilty, you will stop benefiting from your hajj. Don't do that yourself. And don't do fatwa shopping. Now I will be, inshallah, virtually available for you to send me, and I prefer... If you send me, uh, you know, your questions and because of time, I may at times wake up at two in the morning, you know, Canada time to answer your questions or whatever. You know, sometimes I may have to wait, uh, but because of the uh, uh, time uh, specificity for you, I may have to answer you by voice, not by typing. And inshallah, I'll do my very best. But don't go and ask each and every mufti around you and the one that gives you what you already read in a book, that's the person who's telling the truth. You know, I'll try my very best, inshallah, that I will give you what is the most agreed upon fatwa. Inshallah. So, so this, is, this is what we are going to do. We are going to arrive in Mina on the 10th or you know, the night of the 10th, before Fajr. When I say the night of the 10th, because night starts before day, according to the Islamic calendar. After Maghrib, after we left Arafat, it's already the night of the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. So there are four things that need to be done on the 10th. Four things. Number one, please, if you want to take notes. Number one, you have to go directly to the major pillar and throw seven pebbles at it. So there is the minor, the middle, and the major pillar, Jamarat. They are in Mina. And you have to cast seven stones each time and each of the pillars. That is after you come back on the 11th, 12th, and 13th of the Hijjah. But now it's the 10th you skip 
the minor one, you skip the middle one, you go directly to the last one, which is the one closest to Mecca. And you cast seven pebbles. Oh, where did we get those pebbles from? Now, some people insist they have to be collected in Muzdalifa before you go to sleep. No, they don't have to. You can collect them from Mina. But if you have time and you want to collect them from Muzdalifa, go ahead. But don't tell people they have to. Lately, I found that the Ministry of Hajj is handing over pebbles already, you know, to the Hajis and say, okay, you can use them. But whatever they are, they have to be the size of a chickpea. What if it is a little bit bigger? It's okay. Let us not split hairs. So don't, don't, don't collect them to be very small. No, they have to be, you know, around the size of a chickpea. Okay. And some people say they need to be washed in Zamzam water. No, they don't have to be. Hmm? Well, any other water. No, they don't have to be. They don't have to be. Sister, can you please mute your uh, microphone? So, so they don't have to be. And then, you know, after you throw the seven pebbles on the major, Jamarat al-Aqab al-Kubra, the major pillar, after that, so that's number one. Number two, you shave your hair if you are a man. Shave your hair if you are a man. Well, can I shorten it? Yes, you can. It's up to you. But when Rasulullah was asked, can I shorten? He said, shave. Can I shorten? Shave. Can I shorten? Shave. Can I shorten? Go ahead. Shorten which sends us a message that shaving the hair for men is much, 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 much better than shortening. For women, it is still shortening. So throwing the seven pebbles, shortening or shaving. Number three, we have to head towards Mecca. Tawaf al-Ifadah, also called Tawaf al-Hajj. The same as we did Tawaf of Umrah. And then after that, we have to do Sa'i again. We do Sa'i again. Then we return to Mina, to our camp. Then we return to our camp. Now, even though I said there are four things that need to be done, one of them, which I will mention right now, has nothing to do with you coming out of Ihram. And that is offering your, you know, hadi, slaughtering of the animal. That will be done on your behalf without you seeing it because you will be buying a coupon and under your name, it will be done for you. Now, do we have to wait until they come and tell us that they did it for our camp? Or the, You may if you want. But you don't have to wait for that to come out of Ihram. You come out of Ihram if you do two out of the three that I mentioned, which is the seven pebbles, number two, the tawaf and sa'i, and number three, the shortening of the hair. Now, do I have to do them in order? No, you don't have to do them in order. Rasulullah did them in the order of he threw the pebbles, he shaved, he went to Mecca, but he before he went to Mecca, he himself offered the hadi before he went to Mecca. Now, it's, it's a different uh, uh, logistical consideration. So, therefore, you know, please remember that. Remember that. You come out of Ihram. You can, you know, <clears throat> you are in Mina now. You threw the seven pebbles. You shaved. If you want, you can take your shower. 
or if you want, you can go to your hotel, take your shower at the hotel, change into your soap, then go to the Kaaba and do your tawaf and sa'i, and then come back to Mina and stay at your camp. Now, you went to throw the pebbles, you found that it is extremely crowded. What you have to do, go ahead to Mecca. Do your tawaf. Then when you come back to Mina, you can do the throwing the pebbles. But let me give you a hint. Every time I found it doable and workable, when you will arrive at any of the pillars, whether it's the minor, the middle, or the major, everybody, when they see it, they want to go to the closest point of entry to them. And you will find that the major crowding is, you know, at those spots that are closest to you coming to it. Don't do that. Keep going to the one, you know, from the back. You will find almost nobody. And people don't know. So this is the best way to do it. And tell your guide as well. Now, after you do your, you know, I, I, I'm going to come to that when we start to talk about the throwing of the pebbles. So don't worry about it. I take my word back. So now this is just the hint to go back, you know, from the back or to the, uh, to the side where there are less crowds, inshallah, and then do it there. Now, um, and I advise you uh, the best time to do uh, the throwing of the major one is when you arrive in Mina. Don't, but if for some reason the bus is waiting to take you to Mecca, go on the bus. Go on the bus. So you use your own judgment, but you don't have to do it in the same order that Rasulullah did it. So now you came out of Ihram, you are in Mina. And you continue to pray Zuhur two raka'at, Asr two raka'at when it comes, Maghrib three raka'at when it comes, Aisha two raka'at when it comes. And after, after each of the Zuhur, Asr, Maghrib, Aisha, Fajr, Zuhur, Asr, after each one of them, you need to do the takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah. Now, well, what about? Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk. We stop doing that talbiya, this talbiya, once we throw the major pebble, we stop doing that talbiya. That's it. It's finished. So after each of the prayers in Mina, whether you're staying two days or whether you're staying three days, you do takbir. And then what do we do between salat and salat and salat and salat? You know, you just sit together Talk about Deen. I'm sure that you know they will offer you some halaqat. You will uh, have if they don't have a halaqa, uh, you may want to take a nap because you are very tired. Uh, you may want to wake up and recite Quran. You may do a hifz of Quran. You may uh, you know uh, sit with the few brothers or the sisters with the sisters in their tent and talk about things you did not know about your deen, you know, talk about, but, but try not to engage in, and this is my message to all of you. You know, arrangements, logistical arrangements of Hajj are becoming so different. And at times it is not in the hands of Al Medina company. It is in the hand of the other company in Saudi Arabia that they are connected with. It's in the hands of the guide. It's in the hand. And quite often, by the way, 
you will be, and I say it with all sincerity to all my sisters and brothers, you will be inconvenienced. You paid for a package that was uh, a platinum. You ended up in a hotel which is not part of the platinum. Alhamdulillah. But I paid my money. Alhamdulillah. Is it money or spiritual gain? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may test some by taking away the money that they think, this is mine, I paid it, I worked hard. Alhamdulillah. What did you gain in return? Ask yourself. Money comes and goes. And I'm not saying this, and Allah is my witness. Nobody asked me to say this, but I'm saying it because I experienced it for years. Every year there is a test. Sometimes our luggage does not arrive with us on the plane. And we are struggling to have a thobe or to have, you know, especially one advice, don't put your medications in your luggage. Have it in your handbag. People who make that mistake, they end up, you know, struggling medically. Don't do that. So please be prepared to be inconvenienced. You know, you will go to the washroom at Mina and you will find 10 people waiting in line. Try to go to the washroom half an hour before you will need to, especially for people my age. You know, we may really need to use facilities just like this. Be prepared. You know, this is a time when you have to put your ruh, your spirit, your soul ahead of your body, ahead of what we really take for granted, especially as, please forgive me for using this, spoiled Canadians. There are people, by the way, who take the pedestrian routes between Arafat and Muzdalifa and Mina, you will find many pedestrian pathways leading from Arafat to Muzdalifa to Mina. Some people insist on walking, but you go with the group, whatever the group tells you. So this is, this is now, you know, how it is in Mina. After, uh, you know, Mina is over, uh, there is basically... Um, you know, one thing that you need to do. What is it? Now is the time to say that if Umrah had one wajib, I said there are five pillars of Umrah and one wajib, one obligation. I have to now summarize and say that Hajj has six pillars which you will find now, yeah, yeah, you already told us about that, but I want to identify them. Six pillars and five wajib. Umrah has five pillars and one wajib. Hajj has six pillars and five wajib. What are the six pillars of Hajj? The six pillars of Hajj are the five pillars of Umrah plus Arafat. Hajj, Hajj equals Umrah plus Arafat. These are the six pillars. You cannot skip any of them. What are the five wajib of Hajj? The five wajib of Hajj, okay, is to throw the balls. during the tashrikh, the 11th, 12th, 13th, to stay overnight in Muzdalifa, to sleep overnight in Mina, to have what is called the tawaf al-wada' at the end before we go to the airport, tawaf al-wada' and, and the first one is to do, you know, the ihram from Mecca. These are the wajib of 
Hajj. Now, one thing I want to mention before I will open it for, you know, your questions and your comments. One thing I want to mention is that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the 11th, 12th, and 13th, he threw the pebbles, starting with the minor, going to the middle, going to the major, after, shortly after, the sun will pass its zenith, called Zawal. But now, we have to know that he had 100,000 people doing Hajj with him. So it was possible to do that between shortly after the sun reaches its zenith and until Maghrib time. But now, with about three to four million people doing it, it becomes logistically difficult to do that. So, if you insist on doing it at that time, go ahead. But I would leave it to your group guide to tell you now we are going to throw the Jamarat. So let's go. You go with him. Okay. But let us not argue whether we can do it after midnight, we can do it before Fajr. And some people, what they do, you know, they combine before Fajr, they throw, throw on uh, uh, the day before and after Fajr, they, I disagree, I disagree, I disagree. Because before Fajr, it's already the night, you know, uh, of the previous day. Uh, and you are here trying to uh, say within half an hour, I'm going to do two days. I'm not going, some people do it. Is it acceptable? Absolutely. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to split hairs for those people. But follow your guide's instructions. And with that, you know, you will be finishing, you know, your hajj. So this is, inshallah, a simplified way of understanding, you know, how to do hajj. Now, I would ask, uh, you know, Karam uh, to lead uh, how the questions uh, will be uh, Asked and I am ready, inshallah, to answer your questions. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, if somebody is asking, uh, can we do Umrah after the Hajj is conducted, and how many times we can do Umrah during Hajj time? Okay, uh, the answer to the first question, which is, can we do it, is yes, because Aisha, radiallahu anha, the wife of Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, was in a state of menstruation uh, during uh, the Umrah, which came before Hajj. And she was very sad that she could not do her Umrah. Uh, uh, so he sent her with her brother, Abdul Rahman, to Masjid Aisha. That's why they call it Aisha, Masjid Aisha, because it is in the district of at tanaim which is the border of the Haram of Mecca. So he took her, she did her Ihram, and then she came back and did her Umrah after she finished Hajj. So the answer is yes, you can do that. Now, having answered this question, uh, I would like to say that it is permissible for women who expect that during the time when they will arrive for Umrah and Hajj, it is permissible for them beforehand. And I would say, you know, as a doctor that the uh, safest and uh, most guaranteed, nothing is guaranteed because everybody is different, that if you take it or you should have started three months before to take the uh, BC pill, uh, you will be able to, uh, you know, hold back your period and you will do everything fine. But if, let's say, you did not and you do not want to take it, then let's say uh, uh, you started your period and now the group is going to pass the miqat. And they are going to be in a state of ihram. What are you going to do? Don't panic. You do everything that they do. And you make your niyyah of ihram, but you do not do your umrah. You wait until you come out of that period. You do your ihram. Uh, 
you do your you know brother uh, i don't like smoking so please you know if uh, i can see you smoking so please brother uh stop it <laughs> yeah 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 la hawla wala quwwata illa billah al-ali al-azim okay so so anyway uh, uh and this is another thing i hope that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help smokers to quit that habit you know as part of the outcomes of this journey because hajj is a life changer and if we can ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us that will be the most wonderful achievement inshallah so anyway uh, uh you know i i would say that uh, you know you do everything and then you come you do your ghusl you do everything then you do your umrah and you proceed uh, now uh, if if you want to just do another umrah after hajj for no reason no excuse most of the scholars say no because you came for the purpose of combining of combining uh uh, uh tamattu which is umrah then going into hajj this is this is basically mentioned in quran فَمَنْ تَمَتَّعَ بِالْعُمْرَةِ إِلَى الْحَجِّ It is mentioned in that uh, uh, respect. So I, I myself choose, some people do, but I say don't. Because we really, if we analyze what the Quran says, don't do that. Okay, so this is my answer. Uh, Shaykh, inshallah, our hajis are traveling by Saudi Airways. So it's going to be non-stop, inshallah, from Toronto to Jeddah. A few people, a few hadiths are asking me about the way of wearing ihram. Now, uh, are they going to go from Jeddah, some of them, to Medina directly? Yes, inshallah. After, uh, uh, some of them, uh, there are two groups. Uh, we uh, Both of them, uh, they are going to be traveling, inshallah, direct to, yes. to Saudi okay. Jeddah. Jeddah. Yes. Now, some, those some, people... Yes, yeah, some Mecca first. Yeah. So yeah. go to Mecca. The other door continue, inshallah. Yeah. yeah. Those who are continuing to Medina, they don't have to worry about it changing into Ihram garments. They go directly to Medina without any problem. And then they do their Ihram or put their uh, uh, garments uh, at the hotel in Medina. And they do their Ihram Niyyah at Masjid al-Shajara or Abiyar Ali. That's the group going to Medina. So even though they will land in Jeddah, but they are considered uh, that they are, uh, you know, going to Medina, not to Jeddah, not to Mecca. Those who are going to Mecca, they have to uh, uh, put on their ihram garments at the airport uh, uh, in Toronto. And, uh, you know, because I don't advise that they do it uh, at, uh, you know, in the airplane because it will be, you know, so many people doing it and it will be very uncomfortable and let them do it in Toronto because they cannot pass over the Miqat in Rabigh, you know, which is about uh, 25 minutes to half an hour before arrival in Jeddah. So uh, that's how they should do it. Okay, Shaykh, Jazakumullah. Uh, one brother is asking for males. Can their female family member trim and later shave their hair? Or does another male from another group have to do it? I believe you already went through this. Yeah, I, I mentioned that, uh, you know, for females, but it applies also to males as well. Better not to, unless, you know, the brother finds himself with no one else, okay, but his wife. But I really would like to repeat that, it should be an even shave of the entire head. So that would require someone who knows how to do it. Jazakumullah, uh, Shaykh. Any of the hajis can ask? Go ahead. Any of the hajis has question, religious question to Imam? Yes. Uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Wa alaikum uh, first of all, I truly appreciate the way you have explained and uh, the way you have uh, guided us, uh, we are so thankful for that. I mean, this was yeah. the nicest way of explaining uh, the Hajj performance we would like. First of all, uh, from the bottom of our heart, we want to thank you. Jazakallah uh, khair, my brother. May yeah. Allah make it easy for all of you. <laughs> thank you, brother. Um, I was a bit confused, just wanted to know that is Umrah only done 
by uh, for me only or can umrah be done for family members too extra extra okay. umrah. That no, was I didn't, my... I, I didn't get the, the last uh, part you said. Like, like, uh, can you do Umrah for other family members? Uh, like, you, like, you see, like my uh, son you, or someone. Okay, have you, have you done Hajj before? No, I have not. No. So now you have to do Hajj for yourself, okay? Not for anyone else. Because okay. you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that a person may do Hajj Badal, which is on behalf of someone else, only if she or he has done their own Hajj. So this trip is going to be only for yourself. So, okay. uh, yeah, and it has to be, uh, uh, you know, done, as I said, you know, Umrah leading to Hajj <laughs> with nothing in between. I see. Well, after completing okay. everything. Okay, yeah. thank you, thank you. Sister, sister is asking a question. Now, okay. after completing yes, everything. Yes, Salaam Alaikum. After okay. doing the, finishing the Hajj, everything, can yes. I do extra Umrah for my son? Uh, you know, this is, this is what I was asked. The answer is yes, you can. If okay. there is, if, if, and I repeat, if your son, uh, you know, Please forgive me to say this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him healthy. But if he has a disability and is unable through his life to come and do Umrah or Hajj, if he has that disability, then yes, you may do Umrah on behalf of your son. But if he is perfectly able, then you cannot do it on behalf of your son. Okay, okay. I understand now. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Thank You're you. You're welcome. So much. You're welcome, sister. Now, uh, Karen, I'm seeing I'm seeing many questions. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm Salaam trying. Alaikum, uh, Dr. Munir. Can I yes. say something? Yes, yeah, please. I did my first Hajj with you. Alhamdulillah, it was a wonderful Hajj. My question to you today is: um, I'm going to be doing my Hajj for my father, which yes. uh, he passed away just a yeah. few months ago. So I just, I was a little confused in one thing. I know I'm doing his Hajj, I'm doing his Umrah, I'm doing his Karbani and yes. everything. But I just have a question. In between, after I do my Umrah, how, am I allowed to do my Umrah? Uh, no, um, this, no, this no, is okay. again, this That's is what again. I want to ask you. Yes, okay. so I don't do my Umrah at all then, because after that, I'm going back. Uh, after Tawawi al uh, al so yeah, I'll yeah. be going to Medina. So yes. that means I do not do anything for myself. I'm just doing everything for him then. But can I can I give you glad yes. tidings that yes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us while yes. you are doing Hajj and Umrah for yes. someone else who is eligible, yes. you will yes. get the same reward, you know, as if you are okay. doing your own and that person. So uh, okay. let me let okay. me say, even though. The Umrah yes. is, is separate as an entity from the Hajj, but they yes. are combined as Hajj al -tamattu. So you yes. make the Niyyah at the yes. beginning by mentioning the name of your father, and yes. after that you don't mention anything. You do it as if it's your own. Okay, so, I would just worry about that. So you, you will get the reward, and so will okay. your father. Okay, Jazakallah had that one. And are you going with us, uh, Dr. Mudian? Unfortunately, no. I'll be with you virtually, but I will not okay. be able to understand to go with then you. I was the fortunate one to go with you because I remember it was very beautiful. Every day, the seminars during after Maghrib prayer, it was wonderful. And everybody, I would say, whoever who is here today, you are very, very fortunate. My first Hajj was with uh, Dr. Munir. I've done it with other scholars as well but um, you know alhamdulillah you explain it very very well in details and alhamdulillah alhamdulillah may allah give you law a long life and go with us again for all the new hajis and so on I mean, I mean, thank I mean, you so please much make, make all i ask you to do is please while you are there remember me with a small dua. Yes. That's all I want. Yes, I will, inshallah. Do you know, Dr. Munir, uh, I've, this is my, it'll be my fourth Hajj. I did one for my mom and my uh, grandma. But every time I go, because I did my first Hajj with you, I remember you. My husband and I, he laughs, he said, you still remember that, uh, Dr. Munir? I said, yes. 
So you are based in London, but I'm I'm in Toronto. But I remember you in every du'a. Whenever I go for Umrah, I always remember you because you taught me so many little details that you know it 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 took a long a mile away. Thank you so much. One quick thing. Sorry. One quick thing, Doctor Mune. Yes. Uh, so uh, these seminars are conducted basically for the um, Hajj purpose, or would this seminar also include the logistic part of no, it too? No, the, the logistical the logistical components. Uh, Brother Karam will talk to you about it. I am only uh, involved in answering your uh, religious uh, questions uh, and starting with this seminar, and then. Uh, I may insert on the WhatsApp group uh, different tips that uh, you may uh, find quite helpful. Uh, you know, and if you have a questions, uh, I don't know, uh, Brother Karam, uh, you may want to open up uh, this uh, group, but I don't know whether it will be feasible if you can make uh, another group for logistics and keep a group open so that Whoever has a question for me, I'll be able to answer them because it is difficult if you will send me private messages uh, because then uh, I receive, by the way, literally, literally, even outside of Hajj season, I receive, you know, hundreds of uh, uh, messages on WhatsApp and uh, some of them get drowned down. So I may miss seeing your uh, uh, question, but it'll be easier, Karam, if you can uh, open up uh, this group and make another one for the visas and for the movements and the tra transportation. This Correct. way, I can keep up with this uh, group uh, as much as I can. For sure, I think that's a brilliant idea. Uh, this is what I'm gonna do, and inshallah, by next week, we're gonna ha we'll be having a seminar with Sheikh Ruqayyah who is going to lead, inshallah, the group. And by that time, inshallah, all the logistics with Rawaf is going to be done. So we can discuss more a little bit of it, inshallah. But as as I said, if you would like me to answer questions uh, directly, then uh, I prefer a group uh, what on WhatsApp than to receive uh, uh, separate uh, questions. Okay, okay, inshallah, Sheikh. I will, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, uh, and, and Dr. Mune, is this question, the only you... seminar for the Hajj, or will there be? Yeah, no, uh, the, the, the one, the one I'm giving. This is the only one. Oh, this is the only one. Oh, yeah, okay. uh, I'm seeing some hands uh, raised, uh, yeah. Sister uh, Sultan and Brother Rafiq. Sheikh you know, Muhammad, uh, Hajj Muhammad Al An, if you have a question, go ahead. Yes. Uh... No, 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 no. I, I think I'm done with that. I understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, Sister Sultana, Brother Rafiq, if you yes. want to add. Yes, uh, assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, my name is... Wa alaikum assalam, uh, uh, Brother, my question is for uh, the sandals. I know you already ex explained that is, it has to be exposed to your heel, but is there any any recommended for anesthetious uh, sandals? Oh, by the way, this is, this is a total miss understanding if there are stitches the confusion comes from an arabic word which is literally translated and ends up being translated grossly wrong and that word is makhit makhit is translated into thread but this is wrong makhit does not you see even though khayt khayt means thread but makhit does not mean thread or threaded. It means that it is taking the shape of part of the body. So if you have sandals or slippers that have threads into them, that's perfectly fine, perfectly fine. So don't worry about it. It's only the requirement of exposing the toes and, uh, sorry, the heels and preferably the toes as well. Yeah, the second question I just wanted to ask: uh, Our the last five days in uh, in uh, uh, Arafah, Mina, Muzdalifa, that five days we're gonna wear only this ihram. Is there a? Uh, we has to be only one ihram. We can change the ihram on that five days. No, brother Rafiq, brother Rafiq, it's not five days in ihram. No, 
because it's only a day and a half, basically, uh, you know, or or I would say two days maximum because you will start in Mina on the 8th and that will take you to Arafat, still in Ihram, the whole day. And then coming, uh, you know, the 10th uh, in the morning after you, uh, you know, finish uh, throwing the pebbles and shorten the hair, you can take a bath and change into regular clothes and come back into Mina. You are not in Ihram anymore. You are dressed in regular clothes. Yeah, so you so don't need another set of Ihram. Yeah, so that's uh, it, that in uh, the two days, can we change the Ihram or it has to be only one Ihram? No, no, no. You can, you can change it if you want. You can change it. But honestly... Uh, you don't have time to do that. And it has to be only two pieces. There's nothing else in going to be in your body. No, right? absolutely nothing else. Yes. Okay. Thank you, brother. Uh, I'm Munir and just so I'll please. Okay. Um, or the uh, Hajj, Tamatu al Hajj, after we finish the Umrah, the beginning, and then we have to go into another Niya of Ahram to go to Mina. Do we do all that while we are in, in Mecca or do we need to go outside to Masjid Aisha as like I'm doing a no, new ahram? No, 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 no. Right from your hotel. Oh, right okay. Hotel. And, you don't go, you do not go to Masjid Aisha to do that. It's mm -hmm. a good question. And then we do the pray to rakats in the hotel the or hotel. like in the haram at, and then we the make hotel. the niya? No, 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 at the hotel. Oh, okay. And then yeah, we make the niya as the same way yes, we do yes, it. Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. The, 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 the second question is, is not really about the, the, the way we perform. It's more of like it's always in my mind. Why, why in, in your opinion, Hajj Arafah? Why Arafah was singled out in Hajj as the one of like the, the major if you notice, If you notice that I said Hajj equals Umrah plus Arafat. Mm -hmm. So... As if Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that what really distinguishes Hajj is Arafat. So, so that's that's what it is. But it doesn't mean skip everything else yeah. and just do Arafat. Yeah. Well, Hajj Arafat meaning that it is equal to Umrah plus Arafat. So that's that's what it really means. Okay. Okay. Now Ayman, I think, uh, has his hand or her hand. I'm not sure. Salam. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khairan. One of the yeah. best uh, lectures uh, I've ever heard, mashallah. May Allah reward you. Barakallah. Uh, if you come back. Uh, please, uh, just I want to make sure uh, I understood. So I think, um, and correct me if I'm wrong. So um, is it preferable not to have Umrah after we finish the Hajj? Yes. Yes. And if it is the case, what would be the best uh, deeds, inshallah, to do? Like, would it be okay to do tawaf and um, like yeah, without? Yeah, can... okay. Now, uh, here we are getting into the logistical component. Uh, now, uh, for men, I know that they will not allow them to go around the Kaaba if they are not in the garments of ihram. Uh, yes. For women, uh, because nothing distinguishes them uh, for being in ihram or not being in ihram, they may just go and do tawaf, voluntary tawaf. So you can do as much tawaf as you would like, but do not exhaust yourself because you will notice that coming back from Mina uh, into Mecca, uh, you will be quite tired. Uh, but if you'd like to go and enjoy seeing the Kaaba again, go ahead and do it. But even though you did voluntary tawaf, you still have to do tawaf al-wada' with the niyyah specifically for tawaf al-wada'. So uh, 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 do as much as you want. Now for men, you can still do tawaf, voluntary tawaf, but on the first floor, which is much wider than it is uh, but it could be faster because, you know, around the Kaaba during the season of Hajj, uh, it will be almost standstill. You know, you cannot really move comfortably at all. Okay, so, but again, don't panic. If you are claustrophobic, it doesn't mean that, oh, how shall I do it? No, because you will be with a group and inshallah, you will see once you are with the people, you will be moving with the people. Nothing ever happened 
you know, Alhamdulillah, it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So rest assured, it'll be fine. So sister uh, Iman, you can go ahead and do voluntary tawaf. Uh, you can, if you want to, to pray as much raka'at to raka'at nafil at al-masjid al-haram because one salat at al-masjid al-haram is equivalent to 100,000 at any other masjid. So it is your chance to uh, uh, have as much, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically extra salat and reward by being uh, at al-masjid al-haram, insha'Allah. So from, from my understanding, you said that um, it's not preferable to do Umrah after Hajj because the yeah. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't do it. And uh, how about before Hajj, like uh, we, if we're going, inshallah, to do still, Umrah? Still, it is not recommended at all because, no. you know, it says, فَإِذَا أَمِنْتُمْ فَإِذَا أَمِنْتُمْ فَمَنْ تَمَتَّعَ بِالْعُمْرَةِ إِلَى الْحَجِّ You know, and that most scholars said, that there has to be tamattu' in between and not to make it uh, like uh, you are adding basically and counting numbers. So it is basically that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted it to be. So uh, most scholars, most scholars said, which of the Umrah, if you do more than one Umrah, which one are you having as part of your Hajj? The first one you did or the second or the last? Which one? So it is not recommended. You went for the purpose of Hajj al So you just do one Umrah and then come out of Ihram and then go again on the 8th and do Hajj. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. But you know what? If you really want to get the Ajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem, is generous and will give you that if it is in your intention, inshallah. Please, my other question. Uh, yeah, can I take from Brother Abu Yaqub because he's been waiting uh, patiently? He has his hand up. Sure. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum, uh, Brother Manir Kastan. We, we have heard so much of your lectures in Oakville and yes, Toronto area, yeah, and I'm very de uh, delighted and glad to uh, see you are giving us the, you know, the Hajj procedure details and everything i appreciate Jazakallah. that idea Jazakallah. Jazakallah. i have two yeah i have two questions yes uh, one is to you uh, i just wanted to i mean i think maybe both are to karam fires one is that if any recorded verse version is uh, is there to uh, listen this uh, from uh, again from home uh, where we can access that yeah, this brother, is my uh, first question. Yeah, Karam, Karam will answer that question later. Yes. It's going to be recorded, inshallah. It's going to be posted through YouTube. So I'll put the link, inshallah, in the WhatsApp group. So anytime you can watch it, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. And my second question would be, so at this point, I also wanted to know because, uh, like, who would be the leader or the muallim for, for yeah, that? That my, also is logistical. Group, and, I, uh, me Karam and my will, wife is going. Hmm? Yeah, uh, Karam will answer this because this is logistical. I have no idea. I have <laughs> okay. no idea. In, yeah, inshallah, so the imam, only for religious questions. Yeah, inshallah, the imam is going to be Sheikh Muhammad Ruqiyah. Inshallah, he's going to be having a seminar with us by next week. Inshallah. Okay, thank you very much. No Thanks a lot. Okay. okay, Brother Imad, Imad. It's time for prayer, so I'm quitting. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum. I have two questions. Uh, so, the first, first day of Hajj, what date? Uh, What's the question? Hajj? What's first the question? day of the Hajj, when we start the Hajj. When do you start the Hajj? Yes. Eighth Dhul Hijjah? Yeah, Eighth Dhul Hijjah, you start moving towards Arafat by stopping at Mina. But, okay. you know, uh, in in Mina, it is just uh, getting ready. Inshallah. Yeah. Sister Layla? Sister Layla? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. One question, please. You you were saying two for Bohor, two for Asr. Like it's not the the number of 
of ruka'a we are used to. So how would we know that? Yeah, no, the, the, uh, your Imam, Sheikh Ruqayya, will guide you on that. But this is how it is. In uh, Mina, it is shortened but not combined. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Uh, you know, uh, Karam, if you can uh, read the questions in the chat uh, group and ask uh, them, because I'm seeing that there are about 30 of well, them. Well, I think I, alhamdulillah, I answered most of them, and the rest you already answered it. They already questioned. The last question, Shaykh, if you don't mind, one of the yes. people is asking me about tawaf al ifaba. Yes. Does it have to be done right after Jamarat or he can... MashaAllah, MashaAllah, this is a good question. No, no, it does not have to be. You will find that, um, you know, the Kaaba may get very crowded uh, the first day, which is the 10th. And, uh, you know, some people will come back to your camp and say, we recommend that you wait. Uh, so, um, you know... Uh, you can do tawaf al ifada uh, as per most of the scholars until the 13th of the hijjah anytime. And some scholars may even say you can do it up till the end of the hijjah. But you're not going to stay until the end of the hijjah. You know, you have to come back to Canada, inshallah. So basically, you do not have to worry if you do not end up doing tawaf al ifada until later. However, you have to be careful that you should do two of the three acts, which is throwing of the seven pebbles at the major uh, pillar, and you should uh, also uh, shorten or uh, 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 shave the hair in order for you to come out of ihram, but then tawaf al ifada and sa'i that follows that can wait if you could not do it the first day, which is the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. Jazakumullah, Shaykh Al Aziz. This is what I do all the time, but I never ever give fatwa. So I just told him I'm going to ask the Imam and he will answer you. Jazakumullah. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, any questions, dear Hajis? Uh, brother Khalid, I see Brother Khalid uh, has his hand up. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam. Yeah. Sheikh, can we bring a backpack and uh, put it in put in it, uh, big water bottles, empty water bottles to fill in Zamzam? Uh, I, I, I see. They they don't like you to take water bottles inside the haram to fill them with uh, Zamzam. But I would leave that to Sheikh Muhammad. Uh, to really guide you on that because it will be a decision made on the spot. Oh, Jazakallah. But, but having a backpack is okay to put in stuff. You mean to, to go to Mina and uh, Arafat? Yeah, during the whole yeah, yeah, process. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Actually, yeah, you, you should or you may have a backpack because you will take you know, maybe a sleeping bag, you may want to take uh, your uh, Quran with you, you may want to, so that, uh, yeah, you, you will have to take a, a backpack with you, but don't uh, carry everything because it will make your movement a little bit uh, difficult. No, no, uh, Sister Elna, uh, I saw you wanted to ask and then uh, you went away. Any more, questions, okay. Any more questions, Any more questions, inshallah? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. Yes, brother, when we will be uh, Arafa, Mina, and Muzdalifa at that time, what size backpack we should carry? No, that, uh, you know, you should ask uh, Karam or Sheikh Muhammad. I don't, uh, you know, it shouldn't be bigger than what will make you comfortable to move with because you will be moving. Yeah, I know that, but I hear from some of my friends if backpack is a little bit bigger, then security will take it out. No, from no, 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 security no? will not deal with you in uh, Arafat or Muzdalifa or Mina. There's no security that will tell you. Uh, but if you want to enter the Masjid al Haram, then yes, they do not like you to take uh, you know, any bags with you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, uh, Dr. Munir, I have one quick question. Yes. Uh, the question is, uh, uh, like, we have certain du'as 
that we have to recite in Arabic, I believe, uh, when we are going for the Hajj. Uh, and is it something that uh, it always has to be in the Arabic or could it be some of them in your own language or English? Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I already mentioned that uh, in, in my presentation that when you make tawaf, when you make sa'i, when you are in Arafat, when you, you know, you don't have to say it in Arabic. The only uh, two things that it will be recommended, but not necessary, uh, is the dua you make between the Yamani corner and the Blackstone corner. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al yeah. That, if you can say it in Arabic. And the other yeah. one is at the beginning of Sa'i, when you stand on a safa, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahul mulk wa lahul yeah. wa yeah. ala qadir. But other than that, you can make dua in any language. Oh, rather than like that. Yeah, that's yeah. where we were a bit confused because yeah. some say that, no, you have to do that in Arabic. No, no, no. Some no, says no, no, you can do it with any language. Any so language. Any language. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. You. You're welcome, brother Muhammad. Uh, Sister Malika, uh, go ahead. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa Very much appreciated your time and the information you shared. It's uh, it's really very helpful and wonderful. My questions are in terms of somebody who has health issues. Um, let's say they have to use some ointment or creams um, that's possibly not necessarily scented free. Can they use it? The second one is, again, regarding health issues. If somebody has a problem with his, her or his feet and can't walk bare feet during tawaf, can they wear some, you know, like sandals or something that does not have najasa? Okay, the uh, answer what paper, to was... What was the issue of that paper, the, the one you brought? Okay, if somebody has health issues... No, I'm confused now. Uh, is the question about... Okay, can we, can we mute... You know the microphone if we are not asking because the sister uh i think it's sister malika uh asked the question about health issues and the answer to both questions is absolutely yes you can no problem whatsoever no problem whatsoever you can wear your mm. shoes you know especially if it's medical soul you know, while making tawaf, um, you know, doing sa'i, uh, you know, and if you are using ointment that is uh, scented, you know, no problem whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We are here until 2. Is that outside? Yeah, just wait, okay? okay. Yes, yes. Uh, doctor, can you record a little bit of the Arabic language? All right. I did not understand the question, brother. So you can make a video with Arabic language. Oh, in the Arabic language. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I will have. Short one is not necessary to be long like that much, but a short one is the important things. You know, I will leave it. I will leave it to Karam to uh, decide if there is the need for Arabic. Uh, then uh, I will see if my time allows. Uh, Allah knows, uh, you know, how my, you know, time I, I have to run after this to do other things, but uh, I leave it to Karam. If it is warranted, then uh, inshallah, I'll, I'll uh, make myself available. Okay, Sheikh, I believe that's it, inshallah, for today. Okay, so let us make a dua, insha'Allah, to uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla, wa anta taj'alu al-hazna idha shi'ta sahla. Allahumma yassir umur al-hujjaj. Allahumma ya rabb al-alameen. Ij'al rihlatahum khalisatan li wajhika al-kareem. Allahumma kum ma'ahum wa la takun alayhim. Allahumma habib ilayna al-eemana wa zayyinhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuqa wa al-asyan wa ja'alna Allahumma minal-rashidin Allahumma kum ma'ana wa la takun alayna ya arhamar rahimin 
Oh Allah, nothing is easy unless you make it easy and you make all things easy. We ask you, oh Allah, to make our uh, trip of Hajj, you know, purely for your sake and not to make it the kind of worship seeking any fame or reputation. Ya Allah, we ask you to cleanse our inner heart and our inner selves and to make us brothers in your path, Ya Allah. We ask you to help us to make things, all the rituals or the rites of Hajj as easy as possible for you are the one who will guide us ultimately and forever. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa an nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wal asr inna al-insan rafi khusr. Illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haq. Wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Sadaq Allah al-Azim. Jazakum Allah khair. May Allah be with you. And inshaAllah it will be hajj maqbool bi-ithnihi ta'ala. Jazakum Allah khair. Ameen. Ameen.